The Atari Network is a fan channel and is not affiliated with Atari. The Atari logo and name is copyrights of their respective owners. Some video games become synonymous with the console that they're released on. Super Mario Bros. and the NES, Streets of Rage 2 and the Mega Drive or Genesis, KC Munchkin and the Odyssey 2, Tempest 2000 has become synonymous with the Atari Jaguar, despite it also being released on the Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation, and Windows computers. Maybe it's because the Jaguar version was first, or maybe it's because it's best played on the Jaguar. Regardless, when I tell people that I have an Atari Jaguar, if they want to know anything about it, they ultimately ask if I have one of two games. Alien vs. Predator and Tempest 2000. Does Tempest 2000 deserve to be so closely linked to the Jaguar? Or, that is, is it linked to the console because it's really that good? Or is it just hype created by early YouTube personalities? Let's find out. I've played Tempest 2000 on the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation before, and while they are similar on those consoles, there's really nothing like it being played on the Jaguar. Whatever Jeff Minter and Lamasoft did, they made this game play wonderfully on the Jag. It feels like something is missing in those other versions, so just be aware that you'll have a similar experience on any of the other consoles, but it's not exactly the same. When you first turn the game on, you're presented with the title card, and if nothing else, you'll know this game is going to be trippy. Everything floats around the screen, dances, and melts away. It's definitely a sight to see, especially upon the game's release. You have four modes to choose from, and the cursor starts on the third mode, by default. That's the Tempest 2000 mode. This is clearly the main course, since, you know, it's the name on the cartridge. But you can also try the traditional mode, Tempest Plus and Tempest Duel. We'll get to each of them shortly. But jumping right into Tempest 2000 is highly recommended by, uh, me. If you've ever played Tempest in the arcade, or really any other version of Tempest, then you should know what to expect. You play something that resembles a ship, I guess, that spins around the edge of the maze, taking out enemies. However, the Tempest 2000 mode adds a lot of not only particle effects and explosions, but power-ups too. The power-ups upgrade your bullets, give you the ability to jump, give you an AI-controlled droid to help protect you, and much more. These power-ups are essential to seeing the later levels of the game, but even with them, success is not guaranteed. The control is smooth and responsive, even with the D-pad. The arcade uses a spinner control, and getting the game to feel right in any home iteration is going to be a challenge. But again, Jeff Minter nailed it somehow. On a side note, people always rag on the Jaguar controller, but man, I love this thing. It molds to the hands nicely and is extremely comfortable to use. Yes, the number pad in the middle is ridiculous and was outdated even when the console was released. But really, most of the games play fine with this thing. I love this controller, and I can't help but to feel that people who rag on it have never really held one. But when it comes to Tempest 2000, this thing feels natural to me. You can also get or make your own custom spinner controller, but I don't have one, so I won't comment on how much better those are. Long story short, the controls are superb. The webs vary in shape and have a nice color system to let you know that you're progressing to harder and harder levels. You spin all around the edge, firing at a variety of enemies, such as the flippers, who just try to fire at you and eventually grab you, flipper tanks, who split into two flippers when shot, the spiker, who leaves deadly spikes behind, that can kill you when clearing the web, the awesome demon heads who fire their horns at you when they're hit, the fuse balls and the annoying pulsars that become erect and kill you instantly when you shoot them. And there's even more enemies than that. Recognizing your enemy threats and dealing with them quickly is key, and while it seems impossible given the hectic gameplay and all the chaos on the screen, somehow it just isn't. You'll get into this zen-like state, where the game becomes an extension of you and everything just works well. The graphics aren't really anything special, but they don't have to be. There was a time in the arcades where Tempest was an impressive looking game, but by the time this was released, there was definitely some cooler stuff out there for consoles and arcades. But still, this game looks crazy, and the visuals are perfect for what it is. But the audio, the audio is something to hear. The soundtrack is something that I'm sure I wouldn't normally listen to, but while playing the game it just pumps me up and helps me enter that trance-like state I was talking about before. It sounds great, and it's hard to believe that it's coming out of a cartridge. Even the voice samples are excellent, 
and despite how much I hear the words super zapper, recharge, etc., I never get sick of hearing them. Even listening to the fire of your ship is great. I don't know how, but the sound is just perfect. Some of it feels like it shouldn't work, at least individually, but when you put it all together, well, it's just awesome. So in Tempest 2000 mode, you have a hundred webs to get through. And if you do, then you unlock beast mode. Something that I haven't done yet, but I will eventually. You can also play traditional Tempest. And while it isn't really the arcade mode, exactly, it's the game of Tempest that plays sort of by the original rules. It even makes the game look a bit more like the arcade version. And removes the power-ups, more crazy effects, and bonus rounds. Oh shoot, I almost forgot the bonus rounds. In Tempest 2000 mode, if you collect three triangles, then you enter a bonus mode. My favorite is flying through the rings. And while it starts at a snail's pace, it eventually becomes super fast. If you clear it, then you get warped five levels ahead and get 20,000 points for your trouble. Nice. There's also one where you must use your cursor to follow a green path, but I decidedly like that one much less. I heard there's a third one, but I haven't seen it yet. I'll let you all know when I finally do. Anyway, back to the different game modes. Traditional is basically the arcade game, or at least it plays by the arcade rules without the power-ups, etc. Tempest Plus seems to play by the arcade rules, well, mostly without any power-ups, but you encounter the tougher enemies of Tempest 2000 mode. To help you out, you can either play with a second player, or an AI droid if you want. These modes aren't bad, and they're nice to have, but they can't hold a candle to the Tempest 2000 mode. Tempest Duel is really cool. It's a multiplayer mode, and I recommend trying it if you have a friend. So if you can't tell, I really love Tempest 2000 for the Atari Jaguar. But how much do I love it, I hear you ask. Well, I love it enough to give it a score of 5 Pro-Line Controllers out of 5. That's right, this is the Atari Network's first perfect score. The pros are the excellent controls, pumped up audio, intense gameplay that's fun and addictive, and the awesome power-ups. The inclusion of the two-player mode is excellent, and it'll help you get your friends hooked to the game as well. The only cons I can really think of is that it might be too hard for some people. And all the crazy visuals might mess with people who have light sensitivity issues. But overall, I love Tempest 2000, and it's a definite 5 out of 5 for me. Have you guys played Tempest 2000? Do you agree with my score? Or am I off my rocker? Let me know in the comments below. This has been the 7800 Pro System Gamer, and thanks for watching, guys. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to play some more Tempest 2000.